yek e ha ti a ti sle kat yu han kal chish ya ha yu khatang ki ta ta ya us kan akh wat hu ta a ti ya ha na akh tu as ko ju ya jas tlai kha we khan kan ta a ya tu khin wu jin ye a wa wu jin na ya shka ka khit ni akh ji wa a kwas naski a we shka ni cha ku tu has tu khai da Chago Kago, Kayi Dati Kuu Watsu. Tlai Kha Aan Goon Adak. Gwall. Tlai Kha. Hil Gadeen Chasa Kuku Dach Sawe. Ya Kwe Adadi Jitu Neen. Tlai Kha Aan Goon Adak. Tlai Kha. Ye Sleen. Ye Awa. Tlai Kho Nach Yik E Hash Gal Nigi. Gwell yi tu a ges y gu, shka yi l ni gi. Ke kwa g e kwa nach a ya. Ye gwen l chi ish tlain, shu kwa a ya. Yi tu a ges y gu, l te kat yu han. Klin gid ghe nach yu ghe yal ad gi. Gha gwa gwa ti. Yi tu a ges y gu ga. Okay. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Thanks for coming. So my hope is that these Fridays are, uh, I guess we'll have to push our imagination. But it's as if we're just sitting around the fire. I picked out a nice campfire shirt. Uh, this shirt belonged to Richard Dauenhauer. End up with a few of his shirts. So we're going to talk about, uh, this evening we're going to talk about uh, Nora, Marx Dauenhauer, and Richard Dauenhauer. We're going to tell each other some stories, or maybe just listen to some stories. And then we're going to reflect a little bit on being one third of the way done. It, it goes fast. Um, and just sort of give you folks a chance to speak to the class, share your thoughts. Uh, but I thought we'd start with just, just sort of, this is what we'll do for this Friday, next Friday, uh, the Friday after, we'll kind of be in wrap-up mode, you know. So it's a three-week thing, so it does go by pretty fast. Uh, however, we still got two-thirds of it left, so we're not even halfway there. Um, does anybody want to share? And it, I would prefer that it's in Tlingit, or it has lots of Tlingit, and I have plenty of things to share. So I've got a story uh, that... Uh, we worked on, there was a group from Atlain, from Atlan, and they worked on this story with a speaker from Deislin, from Teslin. Uh, and then I made some illustrations for it. It's a pretty short one. It's a short version of a much longer story. Uh, I have another one, which is an older Shingit story that uh, was again cooked down into sort of a bite-sized version for a kid's book. And uh, I worked with Kahwan Ish and Chekshani, uh, George Davis and Marge Dudson to translate it. And the illustrations uh, were commissioned by uh, Central Council of Clinket and Haida, their Head Start program. And then uh, there's a longer, bigger chunk. So those are like little bite-sized morsels, but even though it's think it is plenty challenging in there and then there's a a bigger one which is told by Shah Dog Robert Zuboff and we'll look at that one in its entirety that's what I thought would do uh, and then there's one more uh, by Anya Shahash Sam Johnston and um, just, just a few different ways to interact with these stories. And then also, um, I want to share with you folks what you can do with these. Don't just, you know, listen to them once and then sort of set them in the done box. you got a lot of work you can do with these stories wherever you're at with your language learning. Uh, so as we get started, I guess, anybody got any thoughts, questions, anything you want to share?
to Nishish Kune Nishagoge. Forgive me, I'm going to uh, say it in English. As um, some of you know, um, our elder <clears throat> has been found. And um, I'm in hopes that um, I guess just have a moment. If that's all right, Hune. Cheesh. Yeah, we're going to cut you, Han, Yisaku. We are high and want one canines yet eke aya has to gee with tea. Hechne Hanakaw and Nick, Joe, ya, Achtu, Kota, ya, at her good. Tachlidzi, a ya, chitle, a ya, has to two woo, a ya, cone, has to knock her goody. A raw a clay nach ah, ha on a cook, has to on a cook, a ya, we are corn, cut for good. A do in ark, a ya canahoe, do ira has has she. To cach a yaku as she yayagi. Tayhoj. A joyach to a squeer sakai ye go ayah one. Ewe hoach, day slain so taina hawe ho. Gosh would the jack a joyach to a squeer sakai ye go ayah one, you hansu. Ye cach a ya, ye cach a ya. Ak what the gog, lingit enough. A joe, ye knock has woo aunt. Should ye a ya, connach, declare a ya, has a hunky and knock has woo arty. Hashagania, Hashagania, Hashagoon. Hay did the she a ya ya yaki. Ye were had to was go has to two ye let a ye, Jasa awa, as to knock has woo arty. It eke a custy one running such a way had to was a good litzina ya has to gee tea. A tuna rea has a yakwa yakwa art. A joy has to dart ere you took the turn away ya eat it. Kahuna had to was a good litzin has to two ye eat it so ya hagan ward. Kasha to wash good litzi a year has to custy ye. A plain gun cheese run a ya. Gedain has to cuck ye litini, ye awa. Gunnish cheese. Gunnish cheese. Okay. Uh, so, if those of you who uh, might be wondering what happened, uh, we, we had a loss here in our community, and there was a loss in one of our inland communities. Uh, both significant, um, both probably very traumatic for families. Uh, some of these things happen sometimes in very difficult ways. Uh, and so I just wanted to um, say good cheesh for reminding us to take some time for those who are having a hard time. Uh, our language contains medicine. Our language contains strength. It links us directly to people who survived here for tens of thousands of years. Selena Everson used to say, Our language healed us, it saved us. Walter Sobolov, he used to say it as well. Don't you all forget it, this wonderful thing that was born on the world, and on the world, it saved them. Uh, and our language is needed at times when, uh, when we lose loved ones and when people we know lose loved ones. We have processes that begin to roll into place, which many of us know, that we still know these cultural practices the the people hold each other up. There's all kinds of things you can say and do when those moments come. But I just wanted to say some words of encouragement and, and say a prayer for those um, who have suffered losses in these past uh, couple of days. Uh, 
el chis. I have something really quick. Ah. Ich nach Karakahidi de ya nagud du tech ya gwa tleuske. Shiadaka kwan de ya nagudak ish kagach ach tu asagug nish chis. And my dad's heart is not good. And he gets from the Sitka, so. Goya Juan, ye yeesh. The dataya to Tutla Ati that will be thinking of your father, Gunchish. How? Ah, ye Goya Juan, Johan. There's ways we, we talk about these things. It, it, it gets sensitive, but it's also good to know, I think. Um, they call it kashisikwa, which means it, it just becomes a sensitive thing. So our language contains so much, so much humor, so much fun, so much joy, so much strength. But then it also contains like a lot of things that are encoded for us to, to be strong, because they'll say, Sometimes I'll say, you're going to go through it. Um, some of us, we, we kind of laugh. There's a raven story. Um, and he's always tricking different people and different animals. And uh, there's this time where he says, well, I'll give you words of encouragement. I'll be right here giving you encouragement. It was such a nice thing that uh, he said, but when this thing was really going through it and its beak was burning off, he, Raven yells out, everything hurts, you just got to stand it. And we would sort of laugh because we we're like, yeah, that's, that's Raven for you. It's like, you know, I'll help you out. And he's like, yep, it's hard. But there's, there's lots of things as well that, that we can gather in terms of how do we support each other? How do we support, um, our families, what kinds of things can give us strength when we are going through it. Uh, and there's a lot of those things. Um, maybe uh, since we're on the subject, we'll talk a little bit about some encouraging words. Let me find the things so I can, we can look at it. So just thinking of things that we could say to folks to help them through hard times. Um, and one of them is, uh, I guess I have strength and courage. I've also heard of like be of brave heart. Um, and so there's, there's some things, uh, well, we'll just learn how to say it, right? So let me focus in on these so that they're nice and good sized. So this first one is you say it to one person. Um, sometimes it comes out really fast, but the, the slower version, you would say, and you know it's like say someone's up there giving a speech or something they start crying it's just they're going through a heart like you can just Yell this right out at them, especially if they're, you know, thinking people have clans and you're, you're usually you have a raven side or a crow side, and then you have an eagle side or a wolf side. So if you are a raven and you see someone who's a wolf or eagle and they start having a hard time, you can, you can yell this out to them. It's encouraging. Uh, and so, iku ayah hon is so to break it down, you'd say like, I, 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 gu ah, gu ah, gu ah, yah, 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 hon, 
Juan. 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 Yeah. Juan. 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 You, you put a little bit of strength into it. Like, so there's this whole other form of Tlingit where you're uh, anything that gets into this realm of like prayer or encouragement or speech making, like it goes into this upper register. Right, which is sort of like your your voice just gets into this higher pitch because if you think about it a long time ago, you're probably speaking to this a big group of people or you know, you gotta bring out your your river voice. I've heard it, like as if you're there's a river and you gotta speak to someone who's on the other side of the river. Uh another way to say have courage. Uh, you could say we'll say the whole thing, then we'll just do it in little parts. Well, now we'll do little parts. It so that's just telling someone to just be brave, have courage. Um, yeah, and, and these are things that uh, are designed to help people, right? And so, if, especially if you if you know they're going to go through something pretty tough, uh, and I'll put I'll put more of these up there. Um, let's see. I know there was another one I was thinking of too. But... Oh. We'll do. We'll do one more. Um, so, say someone does something, and you want to say they did a good job. Um, there's a way to say it and think it. That's kind of. It's a fun way to say it. Like when I first heard someone say this to me, they, they laughed about it afterwards. It's a genuine compliment, but it's also saying, um, I think about it like you didn't fall apart like a like an unraveling basket. So that's, you know, that's a good thing at compliment. Like, nice job not falling apart because the, the positive, so you see the hesh in there. So if you took the not out of there and you say, you'd say, you fell apart. You really just totally failed. But to say you didn't fall apart, you'd say, So I'll I'll put all of these up there. Uh we we won't work through all of them, but uh yeah, I'm, I could certainly help you if you want to learn how to say some of them. Um, mm -hmm. Words of encouragement are always, I think, a really good thing in Klingit. Both mm -hmm. sometimes for yourself, and it's okay to sort of just sit in there late at night or early in the morning or whatever, whatever time you're doing this stuff. Study in Klingit, and maybe you start to think, I ain't gonna get it. <laughs> Give yourself some encouragement. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. with Cyril George said a pat on the back never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's a long, hard road. And it's also um you might find yourself in situations. You know, I I, I was teaching somebody Tlinget and they they sit up to speak at a funeral and they kind of they didn't do the the job they hoped they would. And they just beat themselves up about it. And I say, you know what? I say, hey, that's a big thing. That's a big thing you did. Even if it didn't go the way you wanted it to. You did that thing. There's not enough of us who are doing those things who could, if something big happens, could stand up and say something for the moment. 
And, and there needs to be more of us who can do that. But I think what we try to do in these contexts is sometimes practice some of those things. So that if you do have to get up, because we did, we did a lot with words. We did an awful lot with words. And so an elder was kind of, she was pretty fired up. And she was kind of yelling. I was, I was into it though. She wasn't yelling at me, just yelling. She said, in English they say, talk is cheap. Think it, it's life and death. I was like, all right. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see, so let me check the chat room, the chat thing. Okay. Uh, yes, the call of the ego is one. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so I will, uh, let's talk for a brief second about, um, how to access materials for this class and for this gathering. Uh, so I put all the stuff that I do for Shingit onto a blog, which I'll try to find now, it's somewhere. So uh, it's clinkitlanguage.com. And if you go there, I'll zoom in. The, the whole, whole bunch of stuff is here. Uh, if you want to read about the history of the language, you can do that. You want to um, learn Klingit, you can watch pretty much every class I've taught in the last six years. They're all right mm -hmm. here. Um, go watch whatever you want. And then if you want to ask me about it, like, come find me. I'll be happy to talk about stuff. Uh, so this one, if you click on that, this is the web page for our class. Uh, so there are some things here that we should probably wear a week in. And by the way, we've got some guidelines. Uh, <laughs> correct with kindness, speak with love, give everyone a chance to speak. We need to hear everyone's voices. Uh, no homophobia. We include everyone. Uh, our language is not binary in our identification. Uh, unless someone asks for help, uh, don't don't talk over them and jump in and correct them. Uh, there'll be times where we're certainly trying to help each other out. Um, but I have seen people just shut down because they tried to talk and someone just came right over the top. But I've also been in situations where I was pretty early learning Klingit and uh, I was trying to say something and the elders I was working with, they were finishing my sentences. And it was, it was wonderful. Because they, I was just like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was trying to say. So um, try and make sure that there's a connection there. Because sometimes I do it. I've I've corrected people without kindness, and, and I've been uh, corrected for doing so. Uh, it's a safe space. So even though the classes are recorded, uh, I if you want to go share some stuff that happened in here, I would ask that you don't attribute it to a certain person. Um, yeah, you know, if you want to say I said, I'm probably okay with that. But like, let's say somebody shares something and tries and they say, uh, you know, I have a student, he's, he wanted to write, like, I went to the top of the mountain, a very tall mountain, and he got the tone wrong. So he says, I, I went on to women, large women, you know, and basically what he said. And it was kind of fun and funny, but like, you wouldn't want to go say, hey, you know what so-and-so said? It was so funny. But, you know, just instead, just like, you know what happened in class tonight? It was fun. It was funny. It was this other thing. Um, just because we don't want people to, we just, you know, we want to protect each other. Everybody's learning. Every, and sometimes we'll have fun with stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch of words that are very close to each other that are quite different things. Uh, but we also want to make sure that someone doesn't get embarrassed or anything like that. Uh, don't be afraid. Your mistakes will help others learn. So even though we're learning, even though we're some of us may be brand new to this whole thing, um, don't just wait until you can get it perfectly correct. Uh, I, I also, uh, there's a bunch of resources here. So they're kind of linked into beginning resources, intermediate resources, advanced stuff. And this is sort of your, your starting point. Like you're going to build a toolbox you better have these things in your toolbox, right? So it's like you're gonna become a carver. It's like, well, you go better go get yourself a crooked knife and you better get an adze and you better go get yourself a chisel. And so these are 
these are your things. And then if you're up here, you're probably getting like all kinds of funky knives, all kinds of like, you gotta have six different ads is one for every situation, you know, you gotta have a hand ads and a D ads and, a, you know, uh, and there'll be times when we're all, oh, <laughs> you might be, I didn't finish writing this. So, um, I'll finish, I'll put some thoughts on this. <laughs> it looks incomplete because it's never done. Uh, but then, um, slowly I'll get better. Uh, the classes, if you start, they'll go newest scrolling down to oldest. So you can rewatch the class. You can watch the class. I uh, could find stuff that, uh, and then basically, so if you go like here, it says May 20th, um, it's not introduction. So geez, somebody needs to do their job. <laughs> I'll put a summary of what we did there. And then, uh, and then I'll put any handouts that are there. even stuff like if we didn't go over all of it, I'll just put it up there. So download it, use it, change it, teach from it, do whatever you want. Uh, the stuff that I make for teaching the Tlingit language, anybody can use. Nobody has to ask. Uh, if you think you can make it better or do something different, you put your dialect in it, whatever, do it. Um, I do have people who get mad at me for using their stuff and, uh, I guess I'd say to them, if they're listening, just don't work in Tlingit if you don't want to share your stuff. So I don't know. I get a little sensitive about that. Uh, let's see. I think that, and so there, there are, so everything that you, you could need to get started is here. So the beginning Tlingit workbook, uh, a Tlingit dictionary, the verb dictionary, Tlingit Tchinachsa. Uh, the verb database that we looked at just the other day uh, getting up here so these are getting into verbs and parts of speech and everything like that so you want if you're going into intermediate Tlingit from beginning you want to get a jump start on stuff that we're going to do check these things out uh, there are some wonderful texts uh, by and who i should talk to you folks about I'll talk to you about them in Tlingit and then I'll translate as we begin to transition to storytelling. Yadu has Kirchne Kahoyinak Kachonach Stuka had the tea has to eat day. Yah e has outlet to Tlingit. Hatay a cone a year stuka to Hayukatongi, nineteen ninety six away, a achleish teen. Gushtihin you do sock and did hock in a side, Dennis Senior. Gush just Gushok disaya, she will he. Yet cling it there, connish to hush to do in a cock knock who good. Was a ach to woo cow what we go. A cow it at her good. He was a good as a ach to was a good one. Schoon plain kahwa ak, a ka awe jok de nak, tis ach lilk, ach shawat a lilk to hunt her goody, to in her goody, aya. Yash tu ach see, aya you do a sock, huh? Dorothy Dennis, aya you do sock and let hock enough. A ka awe schoon plain, tsu kahwa ak, kit hang ye hat woodian. Ye away hot lock, we hook, we go, beginning clink it. Has a cow she hit, her has out a yeh, has car, canak, a ha has to eat with the she eat so, has a cow a dutch, has a cow she hit, where are ya hai, we hook a car. Ye away. Hut has hut was a neer. Way gow, one for names that she shook a at the cock her machine. Her tech was a coo, was a that takes away, yet she get crusty. Kirchne connected to us a goo and we achieve your a tongue geek a kosher heedy. Connected to us a goo, our two. A cow walk she yeek. Hutsu hoi nak Kunach away our two. Ya hakusti da kahayu katangi. 
Echeochne aya du in ag chudna aya ka kunachu a dach aya du ish in a nachawe chuna dach aya chukanidi chukanidi yeti awehu ka du takian du tlaho a kunachu a dach shakahita yu du a sak du hiti Yan to see to duck a nook or away to claw to claw to each cochain you to suck and do you a tongue data a yeju to me in Ruchin. Why Nakaka, New York, I could say tea. Ya do shagoon, ya German, ka Koshanushi, German, you a tongue you can knock away aus a coon, aus coon. Ya a new she you a tongue it so. Ya connachredi to us a goo kawa nigi. Ya chaku do a tongue ye a English a day. Ye a way a dant, you two were tansu. A de ka idus to ye. Ka skasnik. Judehi ash, judachna ash kasnik dat ye has she a nain. Ya ya ta ko a kos ko ne ya adat ye has ji wo ne ya ha yu ka tangi. Ho a ya George Emmons you do a sock. Ya ha khant ewe wo ko chak chak yi se tinge shtu wo ka. Ya de ho ja uski a shtu wo ka yin ye ji wo ne yan ho. Ka ho tsu. John Swanton a ya you do a sock. Has to eat a ya, ha hunt o' cut way for Drica de Laguna. Kanahoe ha yo a tangi ha ha costi ye die as she would name. Cook a ya has a cow she hit. Ka has so. A ya hai kaka ho she could ha kiko. Constance Nash, ka Jillian story. Ka hut so. Yes, Kone, Jeff Lear. Perne ka kahani ka uh ka gosh a katrazi or up to think it's I forced to it koa. Yat a yak has to jew and pecks you do a sago at ye gay at ka ye dashi at yes the cut ye ka I koa. The cut ye, the cut ye at has our ya yata. Ka yu katangi di towa sago ka shihiti. Weka atlin at kesh has di towa ashko. Kheokne tlai di hin kha na kawanik. Wan kanin z akhar khiz kesh ha daat ye jekh wa niyan. Shukwa aya ye wa ka ishli kesh ha towa ashko. Tlaik. A jowe has di ye jine kwa kahani ka kheokne atlin kho u. Yen wad has to to us a go. Shukwa a a dat ye ji wo ne kheok ne na tla yu ka tangi. Wasa ye ge a di yu ka tangi. Kat la ni hiin yach ye ti tlach ko na khawe. Ye a we we tlach a khu ik. Khu ik a kakwe ye yu khe wo tanen. Di to a dat a we yu tu wo tan. Gwash. Yak good lock aya, get in cuck quasha heat, das a yuki watan, a cock a cuck guanig, clit cock enough, kirne yejene. Anchorage aya, a day has wood lagats, ya kahani ka kirne, ka jagut atsu, as the hunkian, as the carnian. Wujin has a cow a koishkun plain. A tuna khaya has yawa aati. Anchorage, what's that do a saga at? APU, ya, 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 that Anchorage Pacific University. Wei gao khaa jakho tsai khud zati. Anchorage Methodist University, ya awa. Tlai na khaa ak eye ye jini khoi nak. Ya awa wa gao di towa saku ya she cut her uyuk at Tungi Kegur Shitsini. Kirchnea Kaka Akaya, 
So this is uh, Nora Marks Dauenhauer and Huayinak Richard Dauenhauer. Uh, they used to they used to work all the time for the benefit of our little grandchildren. Uh, and some of you might be fairly new to Shingit, so you need to know who they are. And uh, Nora loves to read. She loved to read poetry to people. And she was uh, Alaska Writer Laureate twice in a row, I think. She was uh, an amazing human being. She was fun. She was funny. Uh, she was a wonderful to talk to. And um, she just gave us so much. And so did uh, Richard Downhauer. So Nora's family is from, uh, her father's family is Chukanidi from Huna. Uh, her mother's family is Lukach Adi from Qunahu, uh, Dry Bay. And her great great grandfather was Frank Italio, who was Shangu Kidi. We worked on his language for a while. And Richard was born in New York. Uh, his lineage is German, and uh, he's, he could speak Russian really well, and German even better. He could speak Klingit, and he really loved to translate things. He wrote poetry as well. A uh, wonderful researcher, scholar, advocate for indigenous languages and stories and content and peoples and reforming education. Uh, and they were, they were magical human beings. They were wonderful people. 
But their scholarship goes back to, uh, well, the, the lineage for Shingit goes back just 15,000 years, all kinds of people, all kinds of knowledge, all kinds of wisdom. And they did such a wonderful job documenting it. But thinking about the work that comes around the Shingit language um, and documenting our culture and stuff, uh, these, these aren't the pioneers of anything. They were just some of the first folks who came and started writing this stuff down in English. We, we knew it all. We, it was all transmitted uh, without needing to write it down. Uh, but George Emmons uh, came along and then he met uh, quite a few folks. Um, Shatachich, I think, was one of the people he worked with quite a bit. And then uh, they call him Ko Klux, I think, or something like that. And then uh, Louis Shotrich, who was right here as a boy and who was right here as a man. And he was... He was a wonderful scholar and his reading some of his work was what got Nora really interested in becoming uh, someone who documents culture and language shortly so after him you had uh, John Swanton Rodrigo de Laguna Constance Nash Jillian story uh, coming around and just documenting lots of lots and lots of stuff um, the most influential probably well, they are, they're all huge because they, they recorded so much of the language. And so you've got uh, a great deal of recorded Tlingit going back to the early 1900s. That stuff is pretty hard to, it's the wax cylinder stuff. It's pretty, got a lot of background noise and just stuff. Um, but the stuff that De Laguna did, like she recorded on this little wire. I don't know how it works. It's a little wire, it's a spool of wire. And her stuff was really clear. And then Nation Story did these the verb dictionary and the orange dictionary, which was what I started learning from. I started learning Shingit in 1996 with my grandfather. Uh, when he passed away, uh, I was kind of lost. And um, beginning Shingit, I stumbled upon beginning Shingit. I was helping out with the class in Ketchikan. And uh, it was a game changer for me. It was just listen to the tapes, listen to Fred White and Nora on the tapes. Uh, it was really just medicine for me so some folks had these these real to reels these ampex machines um rosita world was probably one of the first ones to get one she wanted to listen to classical music and then they you know so they got these and they figured out they could record with them so they started going around trying to record people nora picked one up johnny marks had one uh forrest dewitt had one so there was a number of these things that were floating around Southeast Alaska and it's going back to 1970s. So you didn't, you didn't have in the sixties, you didn't have a whole lot of options in terms of, you had to pack around quite a bit of gear. And it was a pretty big deal. A lot of things people did not want this. They did not want to be recorded. They did not want this thing to happen. Uh, one time Nora said to me, so I wish I'd never done it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, hold on. You made like 500 tapes. We, whoa, you know, but she said because people got upset because, you know, and there were a lot of people saying, don't do this, don't record our elders, don't share this stuff. And so, but they initiated this transformation and she worked with some giants like um, David and Ida Kadishan. And um, to the point where Ida Kadishan called up Nora and said, your uncle's dying. He says, tell my niece to come record me one more time. And so she just grabbed this thing and jumped on a plane and flew to Huna. So the first one that she worked on was Natla. So Natla is Jesse Dalton. And she gave this big, wonderful speech at a Kluig. And uh, it was recorded. I think they hung the recorder from the middle of the room. They, they really arranged the room and the people and she was walking around looking at this atu of these different clans. And Nora was trying to write it down. She says, I want to write down the Shinget and then I want to write down the English. And this had never happened before. Just like line by line translation. And she went with Rosita and some others up to Anchorage and they attended Anchorage Methodist University, where she met Richard Dauenhauer, who was a teacher there. And uh, 
and he said, which Nora said, I'm trying to do this thing, it's too hard. And she was, she said she was scared. She was scared of Mrs. Dalton. So she wanted to get it wrong. And she said, I don't think, I don't think I can do this. And he says, of course you can, of course you can. And so uh, they start working on it together. Then they met Jeff Lear up, he was up there. And they all start working on the language together in this pod. And then uh, Nora, then when they came back to Southeast Alaska, and they got married, Richard and Noah, and uh, they they took they went around recording all kinds of people, and they went north. They stopped in Skagway and recorded my great grandfather Bert Dennis, and my great grandmother Marion Dennis, and then they went up to Teslin and recorded Tom Peters telling the story. So this was the first story that they tried to write down line by line, line by line, and then to translate it. So they spent a year and they went back up to Teslin and they met with uh, Yeshna, what was his Slinket name, met with him again and said, uh, we'd like to read you what we wrote. And he said, oh, all right. And so Richard, he read it. And at the end, Tom was like, he got really excited. He's like, man, I didn't know you could speak Klinga so good. And they laughed, they said, no, this is you, this is you. We recorded you, we wrote it down. And then they're all laughing. And he said, well, that's a great story. Let me tell you how it ends. Because in the story, he got to this part where there's these two songs and he sang them. And I think he maybe got excited and just sort of wrapped it up. And so he told him the rest of the story. And so in Tessin, about three years ago, maybe, we found those and we spliced them together. So I had to go find where one ended and where the other one started. We had to cut out, there was, he was watching a baby. And he's like, hey, baby, stop crying. You know, so we had to cut the baby part out. <laughs> But it was fun because they were in Tessa and they're like, hey, I think that's so-and-so. So they knew who the baby was. But from this, uh, they published a book called Kutzch What uh, The Woman Who Offended the Bear with What She Said. And after this, there's another book, Dekuji Yanade, uh, Towards His Wolf. Uh, that was another collection of Tlingit. And then they did beginning, and they did lots of other stuff, but... Some of the landmark texts were beginning Klinket, Hashuka, which is a collection of Klinket oral narratives. This story is in there in its entirety. Uh, Hatu Nago Yis, which is a collection of Kuik, uh, well, public speeches. Hakusi, uh, which is Klinket biographies. Klinket I couldn't find a good picture of the cover. All mine are digitized, so I, I don't carry my books around. They're in my office. Oh, gonna sheesh. And then uh And they were just uh powerhouses of Klingit. So many of the things we have is because of them. And and suddenly I, I like to push back against these hero narratives as well. It's like the one person who did it's like no no no, there are lots of people did lots of stuff. Johnny Marks was out there recording Klingit, Forrest DeWitt was recording Klingit. Lots of other people recording Klingit. Lots of people got tapes. Lots of people made stuff. And there's a whole whole group, Vesta Dominix, uh, Walter Soboloff, like so many people making stuff, teaching people, doing everything they could. But for you folks, I want to make sure you know this stuff. You got you got to understand like the, the roots of, of working in Klingit and that this stuff didn't just come. Uh, wonderful, wonderful human beings. Who, who gave their, they dedicated their whole lives. Their whole lives was, was Slingit. And poetry and traveling. They like to travel. They go down the Alsech and the Dakshahini and go camping and have family trips. Uh, but thanks for listening, to me, folks. Uh, talk about them. Thoughts, questions, reflections. Oh, okay. Yeah, must finish my collection of them. I almost have all their books, but they're very good writers and they're both very good poets. And for my uh, uh, creative writing class, I really enjoyed her Droning Shaman book. Um, I was surprised on your site, the math book you have posted, uh, Catherine Mills, uh, she's my first teacher. I have a clip from when I'm five. They said teach the boys to dance and then the girls to sew. But I saw in your math book her picture with Catherine Mills, and I didn't know that. And then Fanny Hanlon out of Kaddishan were there, but we taught. And I have a clip 
I can share. I'm about five years old and I saw my grandpa what they're teaching us. <laughs> and then, but I was surprised because I didn't know her. My mom knows her because she called my mom sissy. And uh, it, my mom was really good friends with her. Wow. And John yeah. Martin, I, I know him. Uh, Catherine Mills tells a wonderful series of Raven stories as well. So when I, I need to find those, she was very, she was like our best teacher in three oh. years. Well, I'll, um, over the weekend, I'll post a link to, it's a draft version of her stories uh, wow. still being worked on, but at least so you could see them. And then I'll post the audio of them as well. Uh, yeah. She was, yeah, she was fabulous. Just wonderful. I was wondering, um, I know there's some, uh, like our books, like uh, the Transforming Image, for instance, has lots of material that never made the cut to the book. Is there more than just what SHI has for like recordings that these guys did? I, I know a lot of people have some of their own and um, that probably isn't documented anywhere except for like on a tape or something, but uh, that and like, where's the wolf book? <laughs> there's the raven book. <laughs> but there's, I don't know. This is something I wanted to bring up too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so um, basic, so the Dowen Howers uh, donated their entire collection. So they made, Chuck uh, Alice Taff wrote a grant and I think uh, digitized the entire collection. So that, that work needs to also be acknowledged. And then they housed it at UAS and at Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. Uh, Zach Jones uh, oversaw a project where they they hired King Gisti, David Katzik, and Kone Oti, uh, Marsha Hodge, and probably several others to just listen to these tapes and write down what's on them. Uh, wonderful. So I'll post that as well. It's called the Downhower Finding Guide. So what you could do is you can sort of look through and say, hey, I'd like to listen to this tape. Um, generally, what I do is if someone asks for a tape, um, going back to clingitlanguage.com uh, because I, I think the folks who are studying Klingit and especially folks who are Klingit and studying Klingit, they should have full access to everything. But not everybody is in agreement with me and I'm not the only person around. I got no authority. Uh, but if people want stuff, so if you go under resources under clinkitlanguage.com and you go down to audio, uh, if you find broken links, I mean, a lot of them are probably broken. What this stuff should do is if you click the red, the little triangle pointing that way, uh, it should play. And if you click the downward arrow, it should download. So download this stuff, take it with you. These are conversations recorded by Alice Taff. Uh, you go down, these are all recordings that I made of, of various elders over the past, um, oh, about eight years, I think I've been recording people. And then if you go down pretty far, so here's Hashuka, so that book of stories by uh, Nora and Richard, and here's the audio that they got it from. So here's, and then, uh, I'll have to get the rest of them, but here's the text. So you can look at this. There's a, if you click that, you can download the story and then you could click this and you can listen to the story. And then if you're studying Klingit, that you better not stop there. You got to dive in and read the story. And then you got to translate it yourself and figure out, and then just do all this stuff. And, and there's so much you can do with this. This is the whole language component because we do a lot of like little little piece, little piece, little piece, little piece. And people criticize, they they criticize those of us who are studying Tlingit, they call it college Tlingit or the UAS dialect or, or whatever. You know, I, I think, I don't think it's the, the kindest thing, um, but I understand, you know, uh, maybe I don't understand, but I deal with it. But I, I think we're, we're building a group of people and we got to continue to push ourselves to become, we want to sound like, Klingit speakers. But also, there's I have a buddy who's from Guam, he's Chamorro. He says, I, I speak my grandmother's language, but I don't speak like my grandmother. And so 
Um, we want to always be con conscious of trying to get better, 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 better. But we also want to understand that there's people out there who just want to make us feel bad for trying. And I don't know why, but I could pretty clearly say that that's, that's the case sometimes. Um, but we have the old people who were recorded and we can learn so much from this. So as you go through and you encounter these stories more, you can play it, pause it when there's a little break, and try and repeat it exactly like they said it. And then some of them, you've got the text right in front of you so you can read it. Uh, then you go down, there's some here, but so if you ask for something, like you find tape 82 side A on the Dauenhauer finding guide, and let's say this was a collection of, there's a whole bunch of more stories by Tom Peters, like a giant uh, bug, and there was a whole bunch of wild stories. I never heard of them. You say, I want to I want to listen to that. So usually I'll just send you, if you send me an email saying, I'm looking for this tape, then I'll usually just put the tape up there, but it won't say what's on it. Just because not everything's for everybody. Um, most of it's in Tlingit, so it's fully encrypted. Um, but... I'm all about sharing stuff. That, that's why they did this stuff, I think, is so we could learn. Um, and then if you go, let's see, to resources and the Raven book, this project is probably 50 years in the making, I'm trying to make this book a collection of Raven stories. And I didn't make the rules. I don't know why there's no eagle stories or wolf stories. There's a couple of them out there. Um, and so if you go through, um, you could find these. And so you can listen to these. Eventually, there's going to be a book that comes out. And then same thing, read the book. It's going to be like 600 pages long. It's, it's very, it's huge. Frank Italio, wonderful. Um, and if you go down, Susie James, fabulous. Such a fast talker, though. Such a fast talker. So hard to do. Uh, this work. Sam Johnston. Uh, the one I was looking for is Catherine Mills. Raven and King Salmon. Raven and the Brown Bears. Raven and Deer. Raven and the Whale. Raven's Always Hungry. Download them. Keep them on you. And then I'll I'll post uh, I'll post uh, the draft chapter. Um, and hopefully nobody gets mad at me for doing that. I had um, one more quick question. There was um... I was listening to Kitchnash and there was a part of it is like transcribed like a rough what he said. Mm -hmm. And I was I would I would like to transcribe this, but I was thinking about the when some elders like Guneoti was talking about a long time ago, back when she was a kid, people talked in like a riddle and you didn't really know what they were talking about. And um I was listening to Kitchnash and there was a part where he said these people walked across the water with Tan Hulk Kwan sea lion skin boots and they came ashore and they didn't know their language and they thought they were Dekina but they couldn't have been because we knew who they were and I was thinking about what are sea lion stomach boots it's got to be like a skin boat or something no what, what it was explained to me that they the the way that I heard it was Talk with Tan, you do a sock with Cotty Tlain. Ich ki ayant off to cut that clinket on e. De an ach or has out the teen jacut on e. But tesh cool goose, connachre has out the teen. A two sucks away a cable tea. Ye away. Has two shut. Huh. Wasa a day, Gachtu ha. A joe we play na raya kudze gay ha. Tan, hood. A tu na raya kuk gwa uh. Ye awe, cut the uh at yachia tea. Du us ye awe at our ah. A ka awe heen cut na hood. Heen hakah. Ye awe quash wush canahas with the art. You think it the gay, you hun. Take, 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 na. Chakut you retangi, tell 
which has our skull. Clingit kaa has our satin, yak ten kuts a tea. Jahasa our saku, yak kusti. Clingit yaku questions anaswega. Hekasaka. Wush has the sailkin, ye away ho ach. We ichki away tan, has to cheat us our tea. Yak clean as a goo goo koa. Think it jihas our tea. That's what I heard. Um, so what I heard was a long, long time ago. Uh, all of Prince of Wales was Tlingit. So if you look at those old villages, Sakhkwan and Klingkwan, and they, they, they have obviously Tlingit names. But they could see on a clear day that there was some other land down south across the water. And they start thinking, who's there? Who's there? How are we going to get over there? So the, someone who was smart, uh, inflated sealskin stomachs, and tied them to the bottom of their feet and they walked across the channel from the southern part of Prince of Wales to the northern part of Haida Gwaii and then they encountered each other and they said are you guys saying it nope nope and they took them a long time to really start to figure out how to talk to each other but the Tlingit who went over there saw they had these big canoes big canoes and they said, well, we want to learn how to make that. So they traded the southern part of Prince of Wales for the canoe technology. That's what it was explained to me. So, that's what you said. That's how I heard it. Because then people can't blame you for it. <laughs> that's the... say, you uh. That's you, know, you just throw it in your story every now and then. You uh. So they say. And yeah, if you want to challenge, listen to Susie G. So uh, let's take a little break, folks. Um, we'll come back and we'll now we'll go into some, we'll just look at some stories. I got about three or four of them lined up. And if anyone else has one, you got a story in Klingit you want to share, you can. I've got plenty of those. So Fridays are for stories, uh, at least this Friday and next Friday. And then all these, I'll, I'll make sure that there's copies of them that you can uh, download if you folks want to. But uh, let's see. Take a 10 minute break, come back at 6.45 Alaska Gawu. Sheesh.
Okay, out go the hit. So I thought uh, we'll start with some smaller, a smaller story perhaps. Uh, so this is, um, let's see, how do we want to do this? I think, because uh, I've been talking quite a bit, maybe we can get some volunteer readers. Uh, so if you're comfortable reading Klingit, if you're pretty new to Klingit, maybe um, listen and then we'll we'll give you a chance to repeat. But I think it'd be fun to have some of the folks who've been studying for a while to uh, to read and then to maybe, since these are kind of more or less one sentence per page, uh, this particular story, um, I think what I'd like is for you to read it whole, like just read the whole sentence, and then read it again, and then we'll repeat it, and then I'll reveal the translation. And then um, those of you who are studying Klingit, who have been studying for a little while, maybe take some notes of things that you'd like to sort of know kind of how they work. So if you have any questions about how the language is working in there, um, you can ask it after we go through the whole story. I think it's about 11 pages, but basically you'll see a page and then there'll be no English, and then you'll see the same page with the English. Okay. In gay you winning. So we want to read the title. Okay. Uh, so everybody say Sigidi. Good. And we're just going to watch and make sure we're not saying Hala Kach. Or some Hasha Kach. So, Sagiti is this one right here. Big teeth. Likes to chew on wood. Dams up a bunch of things. This one is Khatlakach. I guess I should have drawn a tail. Uh, big sharp quills. Walks Enemy of dogs quills. everywhere. Yep. Tells the dogs, <laughs> bring it, dog. Bring it. I got a bunch of stuff for him. Uh, they are relatives, according to this story, I think. Um, we'll give you the, the longer version of the story once we get there. Both of these names are compounds, which is interesting. I think Tsegedi comes from Tsik Yi Adi, thing below the brown bear, or below the black bear, sorry. And then Khatlakach comes from Kha Shakach, which means sharp hair. Who would like to read this sentence? Oh, okay. That's a good point. Um, sorry if, if I interrupted anybody. If uh, for the grizzled students, the old veterans, go ahead and translate it in the chat before we do the translation. But for now, I need a reader. Uh, Whoosh, kun, kunach, has, niti. Yuck, eh, kunach, cheesh. So everybody say, say, gay, dee. Say, gay, dee. Say, gay, dee. Ha, 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 we want to translate that. Oh, there it is. Beaver and porcupine. Our friends. Our friends. Mm -hmm. You want to read that one? Hatlak ach tegedi hidi de wugu. 
Gunachish, everybody say Hatlakach. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, and I see the translation there. Porcupine went to Beaver's house. So there's Porcupine, Beaver, House, Wards, Woo Good. They went. Singular person went. Sheesh. Okay. I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> it was a fortunate, unmuted moment. Uh, hit ye. And we have a translation. Porcupine left quills in Beaver's house. So we get the porcupine way do that his hair, but that would be hair. If you're not a porcupine, but if you are a porcupine, that'd be a quill. Uh, hit ye is in a house. Ah, a jiwanak. Dropped it or left it there. Okay, another reader. Sigedi klech du tuwa ushku. Sheesh, everybody say it's a gay day. It's a gay day. Tuwa. Tuwa. Ushka. 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 Well, he was not happy, would be Kesh to. There's two ways. You can say Kesh to Tuwa Ushka. So Tuwa. Uh, but to wa ushku. There's two ways to interpret this one. Hmm. You didn't like it or you didn't want it. Ah, I didn't want it. Same, you're saying it's the same thing to not like it and to not want it. So um, <clears throat> we got tsagedi, which is this guy. Klesh, which puts a verb into the negative. Do to wa. Tuwa is sort of like um, the wanting or liking thoughts, sort of. Ushka is the negative form of happy. I have a question. Ah. Uh, is chesh a different form of hesh? They are, yes, they are no. the same thing. They're just said different ways. Chesh, chesh, hesh, tish. It's, it's one of these, there's a few words like that that have like a bunch of variations. So, good question. Uh, I'm sure that this speaker read it because she probably would say tish du tuwa ushka. So, I'm not sure where they got the text. It's interesting. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, read it. Read uh, the whole thing. Everything on the page. Everybody say, Hatch. A hitty day, a hitty day, a hitty 
Yeah, oh, well. Porcupine said, let's go to your house. Your house. So there's Khatak Ach right there. We don't have to use their English names anymore. Yeyawaka, a singular person, said this thing. So we're getting ready to do the quotation marks. Ihiti de to your house. Nachtuat. Let's go. <clears throat> Who wants to read it? Sigedi yeyawaka ak dikika gegu. Okay. Sigedi. Sigedi. Yeyawaka. Yeyawaka. Ak dikki. Ak Ka. 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 Kegu. Kegu. So there's the gate. They said, Ach dich ika, my back on. That's the word order that Shingit wants. Okay, cool. Get up on it. Get up on my back. Can I get a reader? Oh, sorry. Dich i ka ke ua gut. Chish. Hashakacha. Hashakacha. Okay. 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 Yeah, oh, wow. So here's Khalak Ach. Tsegedi. Dikh. So that's the back of Tsegedi. There's a bit of word order stuff that we can look at here. A lot of times the first thing we name is going to be the thing doing the thing. <laughs> All right. So word order is kind of important in Tlingit. Usually the first thing is going to be the most important thing. Uh, in the course of like really telling a story, this is sort of written out for learners. You probably wouldn't be repeating their names so much, but maybe you would. So, uh, so here we get he went up on his back and uh, we had which was the command form. And then we also had those are variations of the same verb. Who wants to read it? Oh, I think we lost you. Sekedi Nahasha de de woo Jeez. Sekedi. Sabedi Nahash at the day. So Nahash at is a uh, driftwood, and then Nahash at the day, the day here. We see it pop up, hiti day, nahash adi day. That means towards. Mm -hmm. Suffix that means towards. The opposite is dach. Dach day, dach day, dach day. Mm -hmm. And woohoo is dog paddling. So there's a whole bunch of swimming verbs. It depends on how things swim. Mm -hmm. So all the dogs, the deer, the, the beaver, all those things that swim like that. Me, that's how I swim. I don't, I'm not a good swimmer at all, but I can. Um, I swim like that. Oh, not floating? Uh, well, the floating, well, it's 
Nahashadi comes from like a, a drifting thing. So it could be a driftwood, it could be driftwood, it could be a little bit of driftwood. It's a whole stack of them technically. It's like kind of has a different name. But. Okay, who wants to read that? Say Gedi Ye Yawaka Ahidi Aya. Sheesh. Say Gedi. Okay. Oops, I didn't give you guys time to translate. So here's So we see these repeating patterns. They said Ahidi Aya, my possessed form of a house it this is this is my house who wants to read it Kim 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 so for coastal shingit, you would say Okay. Yes, porcupine climbed up on the drift. <laughs> There's that Nahash Adi again. Ka is on. So whatever we're going on, it's the thing ka. Nadak ka. Nahash Adi ka. Dudich e ka. So a word order thing, like English likes to put that thing first. Like, so you'd say on the driftwood. Mm. I think it would say driftwood on. That's the word, that's the preferred order that it goes in. Kim Dukat, this is to crawl up onto something. Okay, or to climb, yes, climb or crawl. When I question, uh, um, I, I have a hard time um, pronouncing the, uh, the DL, is that where the tongue is behind your teeth and you push the air out? Is this the one where we yes. do that? Good, good question. So this one, there's two sounds that, that go together pretty fast. So the first one is duh. And the second one is sha. But when they encounter each other, they go pretty fast. And you get gla. 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 Yeah, this is a good one to practice because we we start to lose the language. It turns in this was the one that turns into a G L. So people will say gla like a letter G, letter L, and it should be gla. So I would tease that, yeah, I gla your gla. You know, and so um, but yes, and it's right there. So this one is a challenging verb, or if you're from the interior, so you've got the right there, followed by uh, which can be challenging because one is the DL sound is a little bit hard to make. And then you get a TL with the apostrophe yeah. Coming straight out this way. 
and then the T with the apostrophe. So what happens, one is you're making this gl sound and you're turning your lungs off to make the gl sound, putting this yeah. high vowel out, eh, and then turning the lungs off again to make the t sound. Put it all together, you have two versions. Kim Tlet. Okay. I wish we could be in person where we could see, I mean, really see your your face and uh, the movement, you know, and that's a tough one, Professor. Yeah, well, <laughs> the days are coming when we can get together again, and then there'll be, but we'll still have to maintain distance because <laughs> flying out of your mouth. <laughs> this is the unsafest language to be around. <laughs> Talk about yeah. particles. Oh, uh, well. I was sharing yesterday or a few days ago with the class, um, my uh, son, my boys, they all speak uh, fluent uh, Lingit. And my one of my boys was talking to his friend and he says, why do you spit on me? <laughs> yeah, Joe said, speak moistly. Someone just put it in the chat. <laughs> we're always, mo we're mostly moistly. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Back to the story. So I want to read this one. Gedi yande wuhu. Sheesh. Segedi. Segedi. Yande. 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 Wuhu. 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 So when you're going places in Tlingit, you're usually going to say where you're going and how you're going there right before you get to the verb, which talks about the mo. So like it's really motion verbs get really pretty complicated in Tlingit. So here you've got Sagedi. Mm -hmm. Yun is Yun. to the shore from the water. <laughs> Yunde, shore word. Woohoo. Woohoo. It's going along. Oh, be your mm -hmm. smash, sure. Sure. Who wants to read that one? Kunashish. Kashakach. Kleinach. Kleinach. Wu ti. Wu ti. Wu ti. Chalak ach. Chalak ach. means on its own, it means one person. So you count people differently than you count other things. But chalak could also mean alone. Uh, it depends on the context. Uh, so here you have porcupine was alone. And so it drew a little tear. So you know, he's sad. <laughs> Who would like to read this one? If you haven't read yet and you're a pretty good thinking reader, go for it. Katak ach atushi. We are nagat eek. We are nagat eek. Sheesh. Katak ach. At wushi. At wushi. We are. We are. Nakast eek. Nakast eek. So there's, we, as we go through the story, we'll start noticing some things. This woo pops up for things that have already happened. That's going to be a pretty common thing you run into. So, at wu shi sen. At wu shi. And then 
this one we get a this is called a hortative verb so this is the verb form let it happen let it be that way let them go let me go let me help so it's the the let thing uh, let it be um, so all of those are going to have some pretty, they're going to have a few complicated things that pop up there. If you've been studying Tlingit for a while, it's going to get a conjugation prefix. It's going to get this ta mode. And then it's going to have usually a long and low verb stem. Uh, but sometimes it'll be short and high. <clears throat> Let it freeze. <laughs> And this is what, whenever Raven, if you get into those Raven stories, when Raven wanted something to happen, hortative verbs, then it happens. Cyril George, he said, <laughs> My prayer will be that Shingit exists forever. So once you start cranking out these hortative verbs, like you're going to put the world into motion in terms of the things that happen as evidenced by the next page. Do you want to read that? Where I would let it. Good, that's cheesh. We are. We are. We are. Would let it. Would let it. Remember we talked about vowels? We said sometimes they're going to change from short to from long to short. Uh, we've got that going on right here. We go from ich to ich. Ich. Same verb. Ich. So what did ich means it, it happened. So we get a wo in the front and we have a ich right here. And you're going to learn how to put these things together. Yeah. There's some rules there, but what the tick means it froze. The lake froze. <clears throat> Someone read that. Catch nest they were good. Cheesh. Catch a catch. Catch. Catch a catch. Neste. Neste. Woo good. Woo good. So here's Catch a catch again. Nate is home. Day is towards Wugut. They went. So may read. In Hoskarch, in the Yahatsu, in Hoskarch. We got another story to get to. We can't wait too long. Whoosh in as ash complete to. Cheesh. Whoosh in. Whoosh in. I'm going to say these three in a row because they're all part of the verb. Has ash complete. Has ash complete. A postal alternative. Has ash kaudliet. Has ash kaudliet. So. So. They played together again. So whoosh in, which you'll sometimes hear whoosh tin, whoosh in. That's pretty common, but whoosh in is how the speaker said it. And she speaks Slinket, and there's a dog. <laughs> Has <laughs> ash kamdliyat or has ash kaudliyat is they play, active playing. This verb is not like sitting around playing cards or board games or uh, video games. This is getting up and running around. Uh, tsu is again, 
And then uh, those of you who are curious about the, uh, the WM variation, here's what you got. If you get a vowel and then a, just the W and uh, change mm -hmm. a classifier that has both a consonant and a vowel, it will become an M for inland speakers. Yeah. Vowel, okay. W, consonant, vowel in the classifier. You get an M. Okay. Good enough, cheese. Can somebody read this line? Oh, can I Yes. Okay. Sagadi. Sagadi. Yay, our car. Yay, our car. A hitty day. A hitty day. Nach to art. Nach to art. Nach to art. Nach to art. So there we have all the pieces. We've heard them. Tagadi, Yeyawaka, they said. Ihiti day to your house. Nach to art. Another hortative verb. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, the other thing, those of you who've been studying Tlingit for a while, when you see this day, <laughs> which is towards, it can be high tone or low tone, and it will be the opposite of whatever tone you can be for it. So that will go low, high, high, low. That's how it's going to work. Natu. Cheesh, we've had all these parts. Fine said, get on my back. Daddy can't stand. Who wants to read? The gady hatchak ach dick e car ke ua gut. The cheese. The gady. The gady. Hatchak ach. There you see it. Who wants to read it? As ye came to that. Yes, so this one has an interesting component to it. So there's chatek ach, as is a tree. Uh, when you teach that to junior high students, they just go crazy about it. That one and do, that's just how it goes. I'm like, go ahead, right, whatever. But then we have ye, which is really interesting. So tlingit, the language has a, there's a whole thought world, tlingit tundatani. And a lot of it's going to be revealed through a whole bunch of different stuff, especially verbs and some of these things. We call these uh, a relational base, uh, or sometimes you'll call it a postposition. In English, it's called a preposition. In, on, around, through, all of these different things. And Tlingit has its own whole set of them. A couple of things that just differentiate Tlingit in English. 
is it comes after the thing. Instead of on the table, you get table on. And you don't need the the part either. You just go noun, postposition, noun, postposition, noun, postposition. The other thing is you usually use what sure sounds to me like an object pronoun in English. So you'd say around me, on me, around him, on them. But for Klingit, you're going to use a possessive pronoun. My on, your around, their under, right? So there's a, one, there's a word order thing, and two, there's the type of pronoun that goes with it. The other thing is sometimes there's going to be different ways to think about that. Most things to go in a tree would be os, yik. And yik is really interesting because it means in a shallow container, but there's also some exceptions because yik is, you can yik in the road and you can yik in the river. So the, the yik part, it, it's really, there's, there's a whole other thing. We'll talk about this next week a little bit more. But basically, something most things will yik into a tree. But a porcupine can yi into a tree because it also lives in the tree and in the ground. But because a porcupine, the tree is their home, it's being used here like going into a building. Because this yi is usually how you would go into a building. So this stuff gets really, when, when speakers, when learners start to use this stuff, it's really interesting. Because you might say, Hun dakahiti two day. It's like, well, no, no, you don't go two day, you go ye. You ye into that thing. But then there, there's there's some stuff where it's like, okay, we gotta get this whole like just get these concepts um down. Then we get keu tlet or kim tlet. So porcupine climbed into a tree. And then as we translate it, we're like, well, which one should we use? In? I think so. We're almost to the end. Somebody read this. Get a nice short one. Shliyat with us. Sheesh. Shliyat. Shliyat. Shliyat with us. Shliyat with us. Tree is tall. So uh, people are shliyat. A building is often shliyat. A tree is shliyat. Technically, it's tall. Yayat is long. So the classifier shift. So every verb has a classifier. Buckle your seatbelts. And that classifier often is just putting things into categories. Oh, not just a thing, a living thing. Oh, it's not long, it's tall. So the classifier will switch to sometimes say it's, we're thinking of it as a different sort of category. The other reason the classifier might switch is to say it's not just happening, somebody's making it happen. Right, so these are some things that you'll see when the classifier switches. Somebody read it. We got translation. Ah, oh, he got off. Okay. So be so it's a gay So the kah part is ka dach. So you get ka on dach from. And that those smush together and you get ka from off of, basically. And so it's interesting how it, it, it smushes them together sometimes like that. And. Hachlikach yinde woodlit it. Cheesh. 
خلقت خلقت ينده ينده وطلق ايد so there's khashakach. So uh, everybody just put your hand out and you can raise your hand and say kinde. 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 So there's a bunch of K sound things that are going upwards and a bunch of Y sound things that are going downwards. K, ye, kinde, yinde, diki, di yi. So you'll find a whole bunch of them. Uh, in this case, yinde, downwards, would click aid, crawled down. Those so you've been studying Kenga for a while, you'll notice it went from pet to aid because of the type of motion. There's different types of, Klinga has different types of verbs and then different types of motion. And then every verb we talked about has a classifier and a stem. It also has this thing that we call conjugation type. So basically there's these verbs that basically come to some kind of end or a goal, which we call zero verbs. There are ones that are just sort of ongoing or there's no specified ending or goal. Those are called na verbs. There's ones that go upwards. Those are called ga verbs. Then there's ones that go downwards and those are called ka verbs. As you start to learn Tlingit verbs, you will have to remember the classifier, the stem, whether there's objects or subjects, and what type of what the conjugation type is. But we try to sort of give you just a little bit at a time. So like people are like, oh, it's like this? Be like, yeah, it's like that. But in our mind, there's like, and a whole bunch of other things, but we won't always tell you all those things. <laughs> this happened when I learned Hawaiian, because they're like, like, oh, they learned, you learn how to say my? I was like, yeah. Did they tell you there's three types of my? No. And it's, you know, and so in Hawaiian, uh, you have three pico, which is like a belly button, the one on the top of your head, there's one at your belly button, and then there's one in your groin. And there's a vowel associated with each one. So one of them is associated with uh, the sort of thought world or the spirit world. One is associated with ancestors, and one was, is associated with future generations. Uh, and then you got to pick your relationship to the particular thing and you pick one of the vowels. So like, and so, but when they start teaching my, they'll just t teach you one of them. Hmm. I'm having trouble. And my watch doesn't know one. Um, okay. <laughs> and don't worry. So we'll just sort of talk about the stuff and throw it in there every now and then. But if you're going into second year, third year, studying Klingit with us, you're going to go there at some point. So it's sort of like we just keep looking at this mountain saying, you know, someday we're going to climb that mountain. Oh, we're going to climb that. And next thing you know, we're close to the mountain. Yeah, we're going to climb that. And then next thing you know, we're on the mountain. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're climbing the mountain. Then we're on top of the mountain and then we're up in the clouds being confused. And <laughs> so, but it's fun. <laughs> it, it does start to make sense. I, I'd say stay with the network of people who are really learning this stuff and also like, just understand that birth speakers, that this stuff is just programmed totally in their brain. It's just amazing. It's amazing how much stuff they know. There's only three pages left. Tlel ade yinde huaguri ye. Sheesh. Kes ade. Kes ade. Yinde. 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 Kwa gudi. Kwa gudi. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way I can get down. So think it has a bunch of these, we call them modes. So the verb can change. So the, it goes what we call perfective, future, imperfective, and, and some of them get pretty fancy. And this is one of the fancy ones, which is K 
can't do it. The verb itself gets really long. That wugut verb and the uwagut verb, that's that same verb right there. But you get kesh ade and then you get the verby yeh. And you'll, you'll learn about that stuff. But for now, I can't do it. There's no way I could do it. So that's what he's thinking. Uh, Professor um, Hune, uh. at the uh, very beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, Teth, and it's got the, like the apostrophe above the E, and that's supposed to mean it goes up, but it doesn't sound like it goes up when we say Teth. Oh, Teth. As opposed to cash. Yeah. Cash. cash. Say it again. Cash. So if it wasn't there, it would say cash. And so some of, especially when you really listen to how people speak Tlingit, it is pretty subtle. But you'll hear cash a day. Cash a day yin day. And so you, you really like, it takes a long time to catch and to get your ear to sort of listen for this tone. Because a lot of times when we're learning Klingit, we'll really be like, and we sort of like really exaggerate it. And then you'll get some speakers and you hear them say, you're like, wait, where was the high tone? Because <laughs> it's, it's sort of like you're, you're waiting for a hummingbird to go by and then it just goes by, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> there, or like I, I will walk my dog at in the evening sometimes and bats will fly by and I just like just barely see them I'm like did I see a bat just fly by my face and you know, <laughs> and, and so but yeah just so just watch them so those when you see that accent mark it is marking a high tone so you'd say clash as opposed to clash 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 yeah good question <laughs> And a very short version, if you just said kesh a day, and there's no way. So if someone says, you know, they try to drop this hortative verb on you, let's go get in trouble. Kesh a day. No way. <laughs> okay, can someone read this one? De kwa segidi yinde mdrit. Eat. Cheese. De hua. De hua. We got to do these next two words because they, they smash into each other. Okay. Yindem de eight. Yindem de eight. Yindem de eight. And the coastal version, Yindeo Dlit Eight. Yindeo Dlit Eight. Yindeo Dlit Eight. Yindeo Dlit Eight. Finally, Beaver climbed down. Uh, so back to dialect. Uh, inland speakers, especially from Tessens, will say De Hua. Coastal speakers will usually say satkoyeka. And so they, they mean the same thing, but there it's just a different word to communicate that. So if you said dehwa to a lot of coastal speakers, they might be like, what nasa? Same with satkoyeka. If you brought that word to the interior, they might be like, what's that one? So sometimes you have a different word to say the same type of concept. So finally, it's a gate. Then the other thing is, at the front of a verb, you very often have contraction. So like some people say cannot, some people say can't, some people say I don't know what ain't. Is there a long version of a, a not? I don't know. Um, but for saying it, there are some spots where it's like it has to contract. It has to start smashing down. And one of the things that will cause that, if the word before it ends with a vowel, that will just accelerate that contraction. So the W will change to W, and in this case, it'll change to an M. Which ayayata, last page. 
You've been waiting your whole life to read this page. Go for it. Where Chilon Akawa Gats Ach Aya We As Dachlone Kam Dech Echli Yach Duatin. Goodness, Chish. Wechlun. Kawakas. Achaya. Achaya. We are Stashuni. We are Stashuni. Come to Ailey. Come to Ailey. Yachtu a teen. Yachtu a Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff going. So, a uh, shloon is the outer bark of a tree. A kawakas uh, is to scratch something with long scratch marks. So, you, this is how you'd scratch yourself, a uh, dog scratching themselves. But, like, uh, you ever kind of mess with a cat and the cat's like, ah, you know, like the, the quick strike? That's a, that one would be like, um, Cluck would be the verb root for that. So it's a different type of scratching. But this would be a nice long scratch. Achaya, or is a really nice phrase to learn. It means this is why, or because of this. So this is how Shingit sets up some different things. Achaya, we as da shluni. So here's the shlun you see right here. It's the same shlun right here. But you get around shluni, tree around its bark. You'll also notice that there's a there's a possessive suffix right here. You're gonna learn how that thing works in Klingit. You're also gonna learn like when to use it. Come de khaili. We'd say kau de khaili, those of us who live on the coast. Uh, it means to be broken into pieces. Yach is like something so this is telling you that this is a metaphor and then do a teen it is seen people see it yach do a teen is it looks like that but it's not okay. the longer version is uh and chetlik got into an argument uh said uh i want 10 winters in a row Chinkatak said, Oh no, no, just let's do one, one winter. And then we'll do the spring and then the summer, and then the fall. So they got into a big the big fight about it. And they started trying to do mean things to each other, basically. And lucky for us, I guess, unless you if you love the winter, unfortunate for you. But Chachakach won out because he, he had the magic and he could freeze the lake. Zagid, he couldn't climb down no tree. So he got, so he ended up getting bested. And now you got one winter every every year. Uh, and you also, you can't eat, you, both of these things are eaten. They're both edible. They're, they're tasty. And, uh, but you can't eat them together. So, Yidataya Yisaku. Sha da khaya akhtuwa saku tuwa akhi. Shukwaya yuk akhwa wus khata wusake jiu. So I, I really like teaching through stories. Uh, it gives us just sort of another avenue. And, and there's something neat to look at and learn while we sort of look at all these kind of complicated things at times. Um, and this one, it's a small story. And it's meant to be small because um, there's a group out of Atlan who who had a bunch of wonderful ideas uh, to sort of like use sets of stories to learn from. So they memorize sometimes these whole stories and it's really neat to see people 
um, using Shkashnik to study Shinkit. But we're going to look at a big story now. We, uh, we've, we've had the appetizer, and now here comes dinner. But before we do that, I'll see if you guys got any questions, thoughts. I had a question about the tes ade yinde kogudiye. You said that was a like a fancy way of saying he couldn't do that. There's no way he could do it. Is there a simpler way of saying he can't do it? No, I, I think that's what you got to do. And, and so, uh -huh. yeah. So they, they, but they basically, you, you start with the yeah part at the very end. On its own, it usually means the place. So you're going to have verb yeah, the place where that verb happens. Like, ah, ka, i, tu, tu, ye, the place where people are taught. So if you have some verb followed by ye, you usually have the place where that verb happens. If you put a, de in front of the verb in this certain form, well, actually, it doesn't even have to be in this form. If you have a, de with the verb followed by ye, then you get um, the way the verb happened, right? So, for example, there's some place where Raven walked along. We might call it Yesh Ah Wugu or Yesh Ah Wugu Diye, the place where Raven walked. But if we're talking about, hey, do you see the way that Raven walks? Yisiti nage a de Wugu Diye. Now we're talking about the way, like, it, did it walk strange or funny or you know, like the way the thing was happening. But now if we throw tesh a de, now the verb has to go through a few pretty substantial changes. The conjugation prefix pops up, what we call the irrealis pops up, the q conjugation pops up. Sometimes it gets this little vowel at the end, and then you get ye. Yeah. This one, in this form, it'll pretty much always have this I at the end, and sometimes it'll be a U. So, uh, yes. yen, wait, how would you say it? So people can't do it in a simple way. You said you can't eat them together. Do you mean porcupine and beaver? Yes. So don't mix them up. You gotta eat your mm -hmm. eat your porcupine, give it a good day, eat your beaver. Separate meals. It's, is it seasonal? Like one you eat in spring and one you eat in winter, or is it just like not in the same dish? Or like kosher. <laughs> just because they fought. They fought with each other. Oh, okay. I was just oh, I was curious if there was a right in your belly. You know, invite that fight right inside your <laughs> I awesome. think that's wonderful. Cling it kosher. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have a question. Uh. Um, so in the story it it gives the um the beavers back and the and the um so it's like a possessed ending on dich, which is a body part. Normally you wouldn't possess it. I was wondering if it was like a peg bowel or is it like a form of endearment or something? I would guess it's a peg bowel. Okay. So it probably just helps you get to the ka. Yeah. Because, okay. yeah most bodies, so there's possessive suffixes that go into things. So like kuhida. It becomes ah kuhide ye. So it gets this eh ye sound. Uh, and then uh, body parts, though, don't get that unless they've been removed. And so, but sometimes you do hear them pop up. And here's a case like, usually you'd say ah dich. You wouldn't really say ah dich because you can't remove your back. Um, but so, yeah, that's, that's a really good question. It's a good point. I would guess that it's a peg vowel. So when we say peg vowel, we mean sometimes you throw a vowel in there just to make it easier to get to the next thing. Okay. 
Yuck egg, and it's cheese shoe hung. So we talked uh, about Nora and Richard and this Raven book that's been uh, going on and on and on. <laughs> If uh, you want to work on Raven stories, it's it's just gonna get difficult. Uh, so let me find this somewhere. So this is a story called Kutitan Kahiti. Uh, we kind of write it now as uh, one word. So this is Kutitan Kahiti. I think there's an underlying K I might be missing. Okay. Um, so we are going to listen to this and I will scroll along and I will put my cursor next to the thing. It it's probably going to go fast. So you gotta, you have to make a choice here. If you read along with the thing, it you'll probably be able to just keep pace and hear the sounds and listen to this wonderful, amazing storyteller. If your eyes drift over to the English, you might lose track of the Shingit. However, I will post a link to this recording and I will post this PDF document so you can go through them again later. Those of you who've been studying Shingit for a long time, you should be able to show me how you get from all of this to that over there. This sort of in-between land of, of being a future translator or a current translator is important. I would say listening to this recording, writing it down, and then translating it, there might be two or three people in the whole world that can do that. And we need more than that. We need people who can. Um, uh, there might be some mistakes in here, so uh, please forgive us if there are mistakes. This is uh, an awful lot of work. so. The way this book, oh, I don't know what, how it'll come out. I, I did my work on it, handed it off to another team. Uh, but what we, what we tried to put down there is the name of the story, the translation, uh, when it was recorded and by whom, and then, uh, or by who, and then who worked on the translation. And so, uh, let me open the chat so that it's up. Oh, I gotta reshare this too. Because I told this one. This oh sorry, yes, this is Shah Dog Robert Zuboff. Uh he has some pretty fun ways. Uh we are endeared to him. He could speak Tlingit far better than any of us can, and maybe better than any of us ever will. But he had he got tongue tied on a few words like Pacific and octopus. So there we're not laughing at him, but we we love to listen to him. We love his stories. Uh, he'll throw some things in there about Jesus and stuff. You'll see that kind of stuff just dropped in there as well. Um, but his Tlingit speaking is phenomenal. And he was also a pretty measured speaker. So he'd speak at a pace that I think is easy for us to digest as learners. Uh, and yeah, probably if, if I were to say like the top three storytellers of all time that we were able to document, he's probably in that three. Just the, the number of stories. I, I would probably say, uh, well, my, my top five, if I, I'll pick a basketball team of storytellers, uh, I'd probably say Susie James, and I'd probably say Frank Italio, and I'd probably say Robert Zuboff. And then I'd probably say Catherine Mills. And then I'd probably say Sam Johnston. Um, but you know, there's there's lots of others too. But just in terms of, but Tom Peters, ah, oh, there, there's so many. So so we just scratched the surface of these. Uh, but I got to get to the recording. So that means I've got to reshare the screen and select share. I just have your, uh, one question for me. Ah. Uh, what does that title mean? Who did it, come with the D? Yeah, so it comes this this house I think has several different names. I think it's the same house as Atbutlaha Shihit. I think it's the same house as Dagana Hit. Uh, and then I think it's it's got Atyana Athiti, I think Dakahiti is another name for it, and then Kudatan Kehiti. Um, buried in here is 
fish jumping. So at uwatan would be the fish jumped there. Um, and then kahiti is the house on it. So I think of it as the house on fish jumping, which gets a little gets a little clunky once you move it into English because you're like, well, how do you how do you do all that stuff? But those are the parts that are in there. Okay. The thing that I miss the most um, on these beautiful stories, the translations and the and the recordings, if you want to find them, you can find them. Is I wish I had a picture of the speakers, so I could put their 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 picture in my mind along with their words and their voices. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. Let me hold on. Give me a second. Mm. Yeah, the huh. Uh, so this is Robert Zuboff. His Tlingit name is Sha Dagh. Residing around the mountain it was an ancient Tlingit village when we lived in the interior. Uh, and it could, but it could also be the name of a village that was in Basket Bay. Uh, Kuk is the name of Basket Bay. The Kukwedi are the people of Basket Bay. Uh, and that was his clan. Uh, same clan as Cyril George, same clan as James Crippen. And he was Dukwedi Yedi. Uh, and by the time he was born, uh, people were still probably living in Kuk. But then they migrated over to Angoon. And a lot of them sort of became one with the Deshitan there. Okay. So here we go. Yapke. Ada yukte ye diye. Ya atya na a. Ya kutam shaya yo atya ek. Ya khat. In the middle part of the Pacific Ocean, Aya Ayo at we've done a lot of good for us. But David said to eat him, he's done a lot of good for us. Ya dia na a, ya ya ka ta ya a dia e. A a ya a ye ya ke, ya ku ta tan ka hi te. A a ya a ishik, ya ka. A a ya yan de, a ya a sa ya he. Ya ye. A ka ya yan a ya na tak ni. Yak 
Uh, we're going to wrap it up, folks. I didn't give you any time to give feedback, so there you go. <laughs> but I'd like to hear it on Monday. If you're looking for some extra stuff to do, take a I'm going to so I'm going to put this story up probably tonight. I might be late, so it might be more like tomorrow. But download it, listen to it again, 
circle a bunch of stuff on the paper that you want to talk about, that you think is interesting. We'll take a closer look at it. Big, big, like we just took a look at all those little baby things in that little baby story and we see the big things in here. Like when he asks, like, is there any way you could, that, that stuff is so fun, but it's also blow up your little, blow up your brain. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a movie that I made about the Dowen Howers. It's a couple hours long. If you miss them, go watch it. It was, I only had one chance to interview them and then, um, then Richard passed away. But um, I was so blessed to be able to spend time with them and it's, it's, the movie is mostly Nora and her dealing with the loss of her husband. Um, I didn't want that to be the movie, but that's what it turned out to be. It's supposed to be just about them and their life and their work, but they share a lot of good, funny stories and stuff. And so, uh, I'll put a link to it on that page. It's on YouTube. It's called Language Warriors. But yeah, I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put a link up to that and then I'll put a link up to our recording to that audio version of the story, to the story itself, to the everything we went over today. <laughs> um, so yeah, have a great weekend. Kalchish. 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 Uh, how are uh, David? David, hey, city. Ah, to David, hot city, you teen. I've done a lot of good for you. <laughs> Yeah, away. Uh, yeah. Devlin, you had to suck, like harsh. Ich sage, ich